in this video, we're going to be working our way up so that we can solve this question, which actually is a bit trickier than it looks. So I'm going to split this down into maybe five lessons or so, mini lessons, so stick with me, and we'll see if we can gather all of the skills that are necessary to solve this problem. So lesson number one is understanding fractions. What does the 15 represent? This is the numerator. And what about the bottom? Hopefully the top one has jogged your memory. Denominator. Yeah. So once we start using this terminology, we can understand fractions a bit more. And the biggest thing to understand about fractions, what's this bar in the middle mean? Well, it's not a mystery symbol. It literally means divide. In fact, once we get to especially GCSE, but secondary school, we don't really want to be writing that divide symbol. It's what leads to all of those problems with the newspaper where they put those questions that everyone has an argument about because the division goes in a strange place. Well, it's much clearer if we write the uh, fraction. The fraction must be thought of as a division, but it's a better format. Lesson number two. We'd probably be understanding the basic arithmetic and factors around fractions. So if we take uh, the fraction 48 over four, it's going to work if it's the other way around as well, but let's go with this top heavy fraction. How can you simplify what you see here? Well, yes, we do a division. What do we get when we divide 48 by four? Well, we could divide it as a simple division and we could ask how many fours go into 48? That's going to be 12. If this was the other way around and it wasn't just a straightforward division and we needed to keep that fraction structure we'll be asked to simplify this. And how can we use factors to help us here? So when we have a factor on the top and the bottom of a fraction, it can simplify. What I'd like to start seeing is this in terms of factors. How or why does it work? Don't just do as you're told in class and think what number goes into the top and the bottom, which is all very fine, but you're just using memory and being very good, of course. But let's try and break it down so that if we're presented with a situation we've never seen before, we can do it without being told the example. What is going on here? Well, the bottom can be thought of as 4 times 12. And the top can be thought of as 4 times 1. And now it's very clear to see that we have a 4 as a factor on the top and the bottom. And it's this very fact that means we can cancel those. So we're left with 1 over 12. So seeing the factor can be really useful. And what are the major misconceptions? One of the major problems people have is they see 4 plus x over 4, and they immediately would like to do this. Can you see what's wrong with that? Yeah, it's quite right. There's not a factor, is it? A factor is something that is multiplying. So we could definitely see 4 times 1 on the bottom. That's 4 is a factor there. But up here, it's a plus. It's not a factor. And so we can't just cancel those 4s. Lesson number 3. Introduction to algebraic expressions. So let's make this a little bit more complex. Let's say the fraction has a 24 on top, but 3 h down the bottom, remembering that that's 3 times h. So we're going to spice things up here with some algebra. How would you describe this expression? Said a little bit already, we've got 24 as the numerator and 3h is the denominator. You can think of 3h as one thing if you like. There's just an unknown part here, isn't there? So it could be 3 times 4, 3 times 2. We don't know yet. And there's a lot of situations in life where you just don't know right now. So in maths, we just say we don't know it. And this is what we're going to do to work with it until we do know what it is. So these are the rules to work with unknowns. How can we simplify it? Hopefully you've had a thought. We simplify this one by thinking about the factors on the top and the bottom. So the bottom clearly has factors three, and h, as we mentioned earlier, a factor is something that's multiplying the entirety of the other part of the expression. So 3 is multiplying the h, and the h is multiplying the 3. They're both factors of 3h. 
They both go into 3H. And can we match one of those factors with a factor of 24 on the top? If you know your times tables, which are very good bits of memory to have, then you'll probably very quickly know that 24 is 3 times 8. And therefore, we can write it as 3 times 8. Now, hopefully you can see there's a factor of 3 on the top and the bottom. That means they cancel. So they, we get rid of them. And we're left with the 8, which didn't cancel, and the H on the bottom. So this simplifies to 8 over H. Essentially, cancelling out the 3 at the bottom, I think you'll agree that it's much more simple now. Lesson number 4. Solving an equation. So this is really a big topic. And we're going to start from the beginning and look at a number of examples to build up. So the first example is our very basic x plus 2 equals 10. And the way to think about this is that we have a balanced scale. And on the left, we have an unknown box containing a number we don't know. And we have 2 as well. So x unknown plus 2. And on the right, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10 in total. And this equal sign represents the balance. They currently are equal because they weigh the same. And we know that because of the equal sign. If I took away the 2 from the left-hand side, I'm pretty sure you can imagine what's going to happen. The right-hand side is going to be heavier, and it's going to go down, and it's going to go up, meaning that they're not equal anymore. So question being, what could we do to both sides so they remain equal? Well, if we take 2 off from this side, we could take 2 from the right-hand side. What would that look like algebraically? Well, we've decided to take away 2 from that side and take away 2 from this side. And therefore, what we're left with is just an x on the left. You can see we've got an x here, that's our x. And on the right-hand side, we're left with 8. You don't always need to draw this diagram on the right. But the method that we're going to use is called the balance method. And the balance method means we do the same to both sides. It means if you do this, you can't go wrong. It's brilliant. Give yourself some time to learn it. And any question that you see in the GCSE, you'll be ready for. Sometimes you take a bit longer to get there, but over time, you're going to get so good at tackling any problem in front of you. Let's look at a different one, because examples are really the key here. So what happens when it changes slightly, and instead of a plus two, it's a takeaway two? Well, how did I know to balance those negative two? Look at the pattern. I wanted to get x on its own, and it was a 2 that was next to it with it. And so what I needed to do was get rid of that 2 by doing the opposite operation, which is negative 2. So here we have a negative 2, and we want to get rid of that. So we have to do the opposite, which is plus 2. But so long as we do it to both sides, it's all going to be great. So in doing the plus 2 takeaway 2, we end up with nothing in terms of number, just the x that is still there. And let's line up those equal signs. 10 plus 2 is 12. So let's just take a moment to think about what this, what this means. I always put my answers in a box. We found here that x equals 12. If you just read it, it's like the answer. We put it into the original equation. Let's say we were guessing what that was. And we guessed that it was 12. We would be right, but how would we know we're right? It's because the left-hand side will equal the right. 12 take away 2 is 10. And that's a way we could double check that we're correct. Different operation this time, 2x equals 10. Now this is where we have to think more about what's happening to x and do the opposite. Hopefully we know that anything right next to each other is being multiplied. That's 2 times x. So the operation here is multiply by 2. To undo that, to do the opposite, we're going to divide by 2. Okay, so that will look something like this, 2x over 2. And as we can see, we have a 2 times x on the top, and a 2 times 1 on the bottom. And that 2 is now a factor and will cancel. That leaves us with the x on the top and the 1 on the bottom, and anything divided by 1 is just itself, so x. If you want to go through and satisfy that that's true, this is what you would write. For us, we know that we could just, over time, get used to it and jump to the fact that 
the 2 will just disappear and we'll be left with x. We're going to do the same to the right hand side, divided by 2, and we get 5. Put it in a box, double check with the beginning, 2 times 5 is 10. It works. Next one, what is happening to x? Remember that bar means divide, so we're going to do the opposite of divide, which is times by 2. If we multiply by 2, it's like the divide by 2 fraction part just disappears, the just goes. We don't need to write all that proof at the side. And on the right hand side, 2 times 10 is 20. Remember, put it in that box. What a really neat way of doing maths, right? Really neat and tidy and clear for the examiner. And if we put it back in, 20 divided by 2 is in fact 10. So it must work. So all of the above require just one operation to both sides. An example of a 2 operation would be something like this, 2x plus 2 equals 12. In this case, we need to decide which operation goes first. I'm going to do it in the way I have learned that is the best way to do it. And if you want a rough guide, it's the opposite of bid mass. So we know bid mass is how we do our operations, but and that's like a golden rule. But if we go the opposite way, that's, that's the order in which we want to be undoing these equations. And experience tells me that I'm going to start with the plus 2. So I'm going to take away 2 from both sides first. And then I'm left with 2x and a 10. And then I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides, because I have to do it to both sides. And I get x equals 5. Excellent, is my answer. Another such example would be x minus 3 all over 4 equals 2. This is such an important lesson and begins one of the most overly used mistakes. The first instinct would be for students to add 3 to both sides. And if you thought that, don't worry, it's all fine. But look how it plays out. x minus 3 over 4 and plus 3. Huh? Why? I'm going to plus 3 to both sides. Well, this, this side seems fine, plus 3. Why is it out there and not helping us with this bit? And that's because this fraction is locked in. Okay, this, this numerator here. You can't access it because it's part of a bigger operation, which is a division. So if I add 3, this is currently one number, and I'm adding 3, it would be outside of that. So please do get into the habit of trying to solve that numerator first, because it's likely that the application is complex. I can give you a nice rule, is to make sure that you get rid of the fraction, and what I mean by that is get rid of the denominator first. And then you'll be free to, to tackle the top. So I'm going to multiply by 4. And if I multiply by 4, magically, this divide by 4 disappears. So I'm left with x minus 3 equals 2 times 4, 8. And I could do my basic plus 3 to both sides. x equals 11. I'm going to put that in a box. If you want, you can double check in here. 11 take away 3 is 8. Divided by 4 is 2. Time to clear the board. The fact is, with this method, you can't go wrong if you do the same to both sides. But we can take longer based on our choices. Let's have a look at this. It's a little bit complicated. Remember, this is a fraction. It's locked in. But there's still things we can do to this that give us creativity. What would you do first? If you said subtract 4, well done. It's likely going to be the fastest and the easiest first step. You could have said times 10. It wouldn't be wrong, but just be very careful uh, that you multiply everything by 10. So some people just like multiply this fraction by 10 and they say, okay, well that disappears if I divide times it by 10. Uh, I've still got the plus four and then 120 on the right because I times that by 10. Oops, forgot the four, right? Everything needs to be multiplied by 10. So this would be the correct expression if we were to multiply by 10. And it's not wrong. We've made all the numbers a bit bigger. We, we seem to make it, it seems to be a little bit easier. You could have said subtract by two. Okay, so let's subtract two. What do you think about that? Yeah, you may take a bit longer isolating that X if you do. You see, how do you know which one is going to be quicker before you try it? The fact is, you don't. You have to be brave and you need to keep practicing. Remember, it's your journey, and you have to walk each of those steps. You have to own it. 
You have to know your method. So if I were to do takeaway two, take a, take a look, x plus two, all over 10. We're going to take away two from the left. So that becomes a two, and then that becomes a 10. Kind of looks like the same question. So it's a, a kind of a pointless step, unless you took away four, in which case you get rid of one of those elements. Then some things you do, yeah, could take you longer, but they won't be wrong as long as you do the same to both sides. We don't want to end up with the original question. We won't get much further. Most people imagine subtracting two would end up getting rid of this two up here for them. And I think we've seen using the rule, just don't touch that numerator till you've got rid of that denominator. That's locked in until you get rid of it. Okay, so experiment and play with boldness and curiosity. That is how you're going to get good at these. Okay, lesson number five, putting it all together. Now, how about this one? I'm going to write one which is fairly similar to the aim of this lesson. And you can go back to the beginning of the video at the end and see if you can have a go. So pause for a moment, pause this video and think, can you solve for H? When I ask you, can you solve for H? It means, can you solve it to find H? Or could you tell me the value of H that would make this expression true? You could also think of it as get H on its own. I think that some people could guess, right? So maybe it's two. So that'd be 24 divided by three times two, which is 24 divided by six, which is four. Well, it's not two. It needs to be a little bit bigger than two to make that smaller. So let's try four. Yeah, and it is four. Because then that's 24 divided by 12 equals two. That's great. Not an option for us when the question is not a nice whole number like that. So we're going to look at the methods. And I'm very, very... Uh, big on the fact that answers are not a big deal. Happy that you know the answer right now. And that instead, we're going to focus on the method. So the knowing the answer reassures us, and now we can just play with it. This might not be as random of a question as it looks like, because you have a 24, you have a 3, you have an H, and a 2, all surrounding an equal sign. So there's not many things here we have to deal with. Start with one of them. Pick one and see how it goes. This video, for the rest, is going to show you what happens when you choose a different start point um, to go with, and you can decide what you like best. So we're going to start, first of all, with the 24. And if we do that, I'm going to tell you now, it's not usually great to start with the numerator. I would leave it till last, <laughs> but this is what happens if you do. We're going to divide by 24 because clearly that's on top and we have to do both sides divided by 24. So it looks really nasty right now, but it's not as bad as it seems. We divide by 24, we end up with one over three H equals two divided by 24. Remember that's the grown up way of writing divide by 24. You don't actually need to calculate two divided by 24. That's, you know, it's pretty hard one twelfth. You just leave it like this until we get to the very end. This is absolutely fine. And now we're going to move that three across. So this three here, we're going to times both sides by three. And then we look one over H equals six over 24. And at this point, I need to make sure that you know that two over 24, if we're going to multiply that by three, it's the numerator that gets multiplied. Okay, so that's three times two on the top, and that's why it became six over 24. Okay, next would be to get this H. Now, there's a couple of ways here. Personally, I would flip both fractions. This is a rule that I've learned. So we're gonna do, split the page here, and if I flip this fraction, that becomes H over one, which is H, and I flip this fraction as well, that becomes 24 over six, which you, probably no straight away, it's four. So you can flip both fractions, and that's great. Or if you can't, you can cross multiply. That means multiplying the H up the top there, and multiplying the 24 up the top there. So that becomes 24 equals six H, like this. And you could do that in smaller steps if you wish, but cross multiplying is a pretty decent method. And uh, we divide by six doesn't matter which side the H is on, but I'll return it to this side. 24 divided by 6, so we're dividing by 6 on both sides, just to make that clear. 
and h equals 4. We knew it was 4 from the other side, so that's really reassuring. What happens if we start with the 3? Well, if we start with a 3, then we are probably going to be getting rid of that 3 first in sense. Uh, it's not a bad thing to do, but it's hard to split the denominator and think about it like that. Uh, probably not the best method, but this is what happens. Times both sides by 3. Why? Because it's on the denominator, it means it's a divide by 3. So the opposite of that is times 3. So 24 over h. Remember, we, we're making it disappear when we do this. That's the beauty of it. So we're left with what's left, that's 24 over h. And now we're going to multiply by h, because remember the golden rule, you want to get rid of that fraction, okay? So if we times by h, we get 24 equals 6h, and we're back to where we had before. Probably should write, we're going to divide by 6. And then h is 4. We know it's 4, that's great to see. Hmm, you have to assess, is that, is that a good one? Let's try a different one. So just like we started with the 3, we could start with the h. And that means we're going to begin with multiplying by h on both sides. So 24 over 3 is left. And then on the right-hand side, 2 times h. That's really cool. 24 divided by 3 is 8. And then we could divide both sides by 2 to give us h equals 4. Can we measure how good the method is? by how long it takes. I think so, because this saves us time in the exam, but we often talk about this as elegant, if it can get done quickly. Uh, we could also call it efficient, and that saves time. Okay, what about if we start with two? <laughs> I had to do this one, but it's generally a bad thing. If you're going to add more to the side of H, it's like going backwards. But never say never, I have seen some situations where it's needed. Nevertheless, let's deal with it. Currently, this is a value of 2. The real thing we could do to it is take it away from both sides. Nothing really wrong with that, so let's see what happens. 24 over 3h, take away 2, equals 0. <laughs> and then the next step is to plus 2 to both sides. And then we go back to where we started. So the 2 being where it is, is actually ideal. Leave it alone. What about starting with 3h as a collective? When you've got two things multiplied together, you can think of them as one thing, and sometimes it's really good to put it in brackets, just so you're reminded that it's one thing. In this case, then, we're going to see it as, like, this, this bottom part is divide by 3h. So the opposite of divide by 3h is times 3h. And it's going to be both sides... So the magical thing happens on the left, it disappears, so we're left with 24. On the right-hand side, we're going to have 2 times 3h, which is 6h. This is a very good advanced starting point, and personally my favorite. And uh, because you can see that in just one step, we've got to a very nice point where we can conclude that h is 4. Let's not lose bad habits and write what we do as we go along, of course. That's how we get our marks for our method in the exam. But that is pretty efficient as a method. But there is one more, and that would be starting with 24 over 3. Huh? Yeah, I know, strange. But sometimes that's been very helpful. The fact is that this current question is a little bit complicated. So this is sometimes a game changer. It requires some good understanding, though. So if we just focus on 24 over 3 as a fraction, in essence, we're going to rewrite this. So I'll do it thoroughly, but you could just do it in your head eventually. 24 as a number can be rewritten as 3 times 8. And on the bottom, 3 times h. Okay? So we can see, hopefully, from what we did earlier, that the 3 is a factor. And so this becomes 8 over h. That's the left-hand side. So the right-hand side, we're going to sort of leave as it is, and we're only just sorting out a fraction. It's not necessarily doing the same thing to both sides. It's in fact doing the same thing to the numerator and the denominator. So it's got its balance in its own way. Now this is still equal to 2, except we've tidied up the left-hand side. And I think you'll agree it looks a lot more simple. And that can make a big difference in the exam. Okay, when you can see clearly, when there's not much to process through your head, that can make a big difference. So 8 over h equals 2. 
This is another weird step, but you'll get used to it. We want to get rid of the denominator. Okay, I know we're trying to get rid of what's near the H, but sometimes if H is on the, on the denominator, that's the problem. So to get rid of a denominator, we multiply by that denominator. So we, very strangely, we're going to multiply by H on both sides. And that's going to leave us with 8 equals 2H. And we're going to divide by 2 to get that H alone, and so therefore H equals 4. Hey, like we knew it did, but we had to work for that one, right? So seeing the method from the start to finish, it's probably not too quick, but it's definitely elegant in its own way. So remember what method you like best when you now go back to do the original question at the start of this video. I wish you very good luck in doing so. If you want to join my Patreon community, starting at just one pound per month, you can get a full script of this lesson and examples to practice the questions in this lesson as a PDF. You could also suggest the next topic to go through in depth. One lucky Patreon subscriber will be getting their subscription refunded at the end of the month. Terms and conditions apply. Thanks for watching.